Welcome, Shift Home Church. We are super excited that you decided to join us today. Um, we are gathering with you from your homes, and we would love to know where you're watching from because we know you guys are watching from all over the place. So go ahead and drop in the comments where you're watching from this morning. We miss being with you guys, and we want to interact with you. So feel free to leave a comment in YouTube or Facebook, and somebody, one of our staff, will be there to interact with you, to pray with you, and we encourage you to interact with each other on those co in those comment sections. Yeah, actually, if it's your first time, we are super pumped that you decided to pop on in and wa uh, watch with us today. So go ahead and write the word new in the comment section. We'll send you a link just to connect with you, um, just to say, hey, what's up? We're glad you're here. And also, if you're uh, today, if you're like, man, I wanna go deeper with Shift Church, Write the word next, whether it's with the church or with Jesus. We want to walk you with that on your next step. So write the word next, and we'll connect with you this week. The cool thing about commenting on Facebook and YouTube is that you're making a difference right there from your living room or kitchen. And we want to encourage you to leave comments, as, and every comment that you make throughout the service and worship, we at Shift Church will make a donation to our community partner this month. This month's community partner is St. Francis House. It's a local organization out of Gainesville that helps people and families transition out of homelessness. So the cool, so we pray that you continue to engage in that way and make a difference right there from your home. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great organization. So no matter where you are in the world today, you can impact the people of Gainesville by just going ahead and commenting today on something that speaks to you. And while you're doing that, go ahead. If you're in Facebook, start a watch party. That's your invitation. That's the way you invite people to join you to ch uh, church today. So if you would invite people to shift, go ahead and invite them from Facebook. Go ahead and say, hey, this is my church. Come join me this morning. They'll check it out because you invited them. A personal invite goes along. Long way. So open up your YouVersion Bible app. On there, on the bottom right of your screen, there's a more button. In that more button section, there's an event section. Then you search Shift Church in that event section, and then you can follow along with the main points, take notes, look at the scriptures, and engage with us throughout the service and throughout the sermon. Absolutely. So go ahead. If you have your version, pull that up. Do exactly what Stephen just said, and um, we'll get started. Or grab your Bible, and let's go ahead and dive straight into our message today. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. In an age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present period. The sum of the noisiest authorities insisted on it being received for good or for evil. In the superlative degree of comparison only. It's a... From the Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. And uh, just thinking about that right now where we're at, I mean, that's a pretty good summary of what we're experiencing right now and, and what we're going through. I mean, it, 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 it's not that hard to point out, 
you know, why this would be the worst of times. I mean, think about it. It doesn't need a lot of explanation. I mean, COVID-19 has overturned our economy, caused massive job loss, has led to like way more isolation and fear and anxiety and worry than we ever thought would take place. And that's leaving out all the death. It's the worst of times. Paul, an early church leader, was writing uh, to a church a lot like Shift, and it was a letter that he wrote to the church at Ephesus, and he gave some advice on how to navigate these hard times, and this is what he wrote. He said, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. See, we have an opportunity to make the most of the situation that we're in right now. I actually said in, um, in our staff meeting this week that I believe that the church will never be the same because of the coronavirus. And I believe that that isn't even a bad thing, but it is a thing. And we do have to make some adjustments right now. Some things are changing. See, it, this isn't a time for the church to sit idle and coast, like just get by. If we can just make it to the time when we're back together again. This isn't a time for that. No, instead we must lean into one of the most defining moments in the church's history. See, the church will never be the same, and that's not a bad thing. Over the next few weeks, we are taking a a complete turn. We were actually planning for a marriage series uh, starting today, and our team decided that we're going to throw it all out. And after both myself and Joe had written one of the messages, we threw it all out. And now we're going to focus in on something else because we believe right now it is a moment in the church's history that will forever change us because the church has left the building. Now at shift, We don't have a building, right? So you're thinking, yeah, we don't have one. Like, we get it. But here's the problem. Even renting a facility creates some things and creates even some perceptions of the church that aren't reality. Like, we can get our definition wrong of what the church is. We have to face that and really own it. Like, this is our problem to bear right now. Is what is the church and what should it be? Because we need to know that so that we can decide how to move forward. See, this isn't a time that we keep just pushing on, but it's a time that we start to think about what matters most. So let's, 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 let's really hone in. Let's, let's seize this opportunity to make a difference. The opportunity to make the church something better than what it is. So let's start with the very basic The definition. What's the definition of the church? Well, dictionary.com defines church as a building used for public Christian worship. But given our current state of the way that things are going and the way that things are, like that blows up right away because that's not reality because the, the church is carrying on. I mean, most churches right now aren't using buildings at all. And if they are, they're using it more like a recording studio than a place where Christians gather. Plus, the definition of a church as a separate building for a place of worship that would be, it would be completely foreign to the early, like, or the early Christians and the early believers. Like, that wasn't something that would take place. It was, when when it was mentioned in the New Testament, when it was brought up in Scripture, it was always as a place to, to say it was a relation to the people that would gather there. Like, Paul wrote to the church at Rome. He said, greet also the church that meets at their house. Or when he wrote the letter to the church at Corinth, the churches in the providence of Asia send you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord. And so does the church that meets at their house. Or the letter that the, the, to the church called Colossians says, give my greeting to the brothers and sisters at Lacedonia, in Napha, in the church at her house. Or when Paul wrote to Philemon, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, 
also to Apha, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. See, there's a reason that we're calling these online gatherings Shift Home Church, because that was the reality of the early church. That was the way it was. And why? Because the church has never been about a building. It has always been about the people. And the people cannot be stopped. Now, for those of you that are rolling your eyes right now because you've gotten sick and tired over the years of me saying this over and over and over again. Well, here's the thing. I know that I've been telling you this for years. And yep, I'm going to tell you about it again. Because right now, we don't have the luxury of the option. We have to move from what we know. Okay, because we know the church is not a building, but instead we need to move it to what we do. See, we have to actually start to live this out. So now, be, be, before we dive into this, a little side note. We've been hearing the question quite a bit is, when will the church reopen? Like, I've been hearing it on blog posts. I've been seeing it in news headlines. When will the church reopen? Let me remind you. The church never closed. You are the church. See, we are the church, and it's incredibly important that we learn to change our terminology because you can't close the church. You can't shut us down, and you can't shut us up. I know what, what we're really asking when, when we're asking that question, when will the church re reopen? We're, we're really asking when are, we gonna, when are we gonna be able to gather in community again? Like, when are we gonna be able to see each other all together and worship together? See, we are as excited as you are for the option to, to re-engage that, that Sunday morning gathering. Like, we think there's a lot of good things about it. And, and, and the reality is, is I believe that the church in America is being shook up because that has been our central point and it has become the thing instead of a thing. And so we are going to shake up shift a little bit and start to think about this. And we're going to talk about when, when the opportunity comes for us to re-engage our gathering again. We're going to be given more information soon, um, but not yet. Like, it's not time yet. And so today what I want to focus on is what is the roots of our faith? Like, what is the roots of the Christian faith? What does it look like to actually be the church? Because we are the church. So how do we be the church? So let's go back all the way to the beginning, all right? So if you have your Bibles with you today or you use the, the Bible app or you're following along on the YouVersion event right now, go ahead and open it up. We're going to be focusing in on a, a letter called Acts that was recording the start of the early church and actually all the things that were taking place. The, the, the author, Luke, was a doctor, and what he was doing was making sure that we had the facts of what the early church did and how it did it because it was all incredibly important. And so what I want to do is we're going to start at verse 42. We're going to read all the way through it, um, and then I want to take it line by line and focus in on how we can be the church. This is what it reads, Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 42. It says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all of the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Now, you might be thinking, well, I don't believe. And that started off with all the believers. So 
you might think, well, the church isn't for me then. But I want to tell you that our community is for you. As a matter of fact, like we have this thing that we say is that you can belong before you believe. And that's okay. Like we would rather you connect to community and start to take steps with us and to figure this thing out. Because what the church does and what the early church did was they designed itself to help them stand firm in their faith. Like the whole purpose of the church was for those that were starting to take steps so that they could stand firm. And the early church knew something that I know is that we need each other to be able to do that. Why? Because when you start to believe, it doesn't mean that things get easier. As a matter of fact, most of the time when you start taking steps to get closer to Jesus, things start to get a little bit harder. Like things start to just not add up. Like things get in your way along the way. But the church community is designed so that we're able to stand firm. So let's break down what the church community actually is and what the people called the church looks like. So let's take the first line. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So a better word for devoted right there would be the word steadfastly. Like they steadfastly held on to the apostles' teaching. See, this idea of teaching or preaching comes from what Jesus instructed. And Jesus actually modeled this himself. Like what I'm doing right now, Jesus modeled himself. And we can't dismiss the word of God being delivered to the people. See, the writing that we have in scripture, the letters to the early church, the biography writing of Jesus' life, like all of this needs to be taught and needs to be reminded And we need to have moments where we're shook up by the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we have to know what the scripture actually says. Jesus instructed his disciples to go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything that he had commanded to them. See, Jesus also promised that the Holy Spirit would constantly remind the leaders of the church to, to what Jesus said and bring and call to remembrance of what Jesus said so that the, the teachers and the leaders could actually continue to relay that message to the people. See, at Shift, we will continue to teach and preach God's word, but it will be for an avenue of discussion. It is not just to talk at someone for knowledge. No, it is about communing and having conversations with one another. Like, we will never be a just take my word for it church. I'm never going to do that to you. You don't have to just take my word. As a matter of fact, I love when you ask me questions. I love it when you challenge something that we teach. That's a good thing. And, and that is a thing that the church would do. They would sit down and have discussions. See, I think that we don't have to agree on everything for us to grow together in Jesus. Luke continues on. Into the fellowship, into the sharing of meals, including the Lord's Supper and prayer. This is where the whole idea of small groups play in. Like small groups and dinner groups, they come from this idea. And the Greek word for this is kononea, which literally means to share or to fellowship. Like fellowship is sharing, all right? Sharing information, sharing stuff, sharing with one another. Koinonia, this is the idea of small groups and dinner groups that we would get together and do these things. And what they would do, the early church leaders, they would have House churches where they would get together and discuss what the teaching had taken place. That's exactly what small groups do. They would share meals with one another. They would spend time together. They would drink wine and break bread and remember what Jesus did for them on the cross. And they would spend time laying hands on each other and praying for one another. See, at Shift... We will no longer be a church with small groups. We are a church of small groups. We are a church of small groups. 
we will focus on growing in small groups and dinner groups or home churches. Like we, will, we know that teaching and preaching is important, but it's a thing, not the thing. The thing is being in community together and being engaged in a small group and talking about what has just been taught and learning from one another. See, we are a church of small groups. Luke continues to describe the church. He says, with a deep sense of awe coming over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. See, the phrase, deep sense of awe, the the idea of deep sense of awe would be more like, you, you know that moment when you meet somebody that is like a little bit famous or like all the way famous, where you're like in awe of like their power and authority in this situation and you get a little, a little nervous and you giddy. That is what, we would be, what was taking place was that they were like in awe of what God was doing and the raw power that he had and the raw power that was taking place in their meetings. See, the Holy Spirit was showing up in their lives. See, God moved and they were completely blown away. People were being saved by Jesus. People were coming to know him and and strongholds were being set free in their lives and miracles were happening and signs and wonders kept revealing something about who God is because God isn't some God off in the distance. He's a God that wants to get personal and touch you and heal you. See, at Shift, we believe God is active today in the now. Like, we believe that God wants to do miraculous things in our lives today. We believe in the laying on of hands and praying for each other so that you can be healed. Like, we believe that the Holy Spirit will change you radically. We believe that you can't just experience God and go back to what you were doing before. It's gonna look different. And we want to be a church that would walk you, walk with you through that. Luke continues to explain about the early church. He says, and all of the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money to those in need. This is like pulling on the unity of the group, like unity of the church. Another way to say this is that they were all unified and they shared everything they had. They were all together in this. See, this is, this is tying small groups and home church back to the church. How, how Christ followers have each other's backs. See, this isn't saying, this isn't saying that Christians can't have possessions. As a matter of fact, uh, we know that to be true because Luke wrote about different people's homes and he, he said the church at so-and-so's house. And, and he was confirming that they still had their homes, but some people, you know what? They had more than they needed and they had the opportunity to, to be generous with the stuff that they had. And that is what the church does. The church is this idea that would help each other, that would do life together. As a matter of fact, this comes from a Jewish tradition where they would distribute food to needy people all over the the community or the town. And Christians were simply taking it a step further. Like, because of their heartfelt unity, they were willing to make real sacrifice to help other people. See, at Shift... We will always lead with generosity. I mean, when there's a need, we will sacrifice to make sure that it is met. See, we are committed to making a difference in our community and making a difference in each other's life. See, this, um, this past week, if we rewind a little bit, uh, we've been doing something called the Gainesville Give and we're, we're partnering with Maple Street Biscuit Company to help out St. Francis House and to help feed some of the people that are less fortunate in the community than, than maybe some of us are. 
And, um, and, I, and I, I decided to do this, like, to, in my mind, it was audacious, you know. Uh, we had raised about $600 to, to donate to St. Francis House. And so I, I sent to our bookkeeper, hey, send me a check for $1,000. We're, we're just going to go for it, like, believing that people are going to give. Well, this is how incredibly generous our people are. Like, I, I, I had my mind set on something small. And, 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 like, literally the day that I got the check, we got to order another thousand. And so we're going to be giving St. Francis House $2,000 in just a few weeks. And we are so excited for your generosity. And keep being irrationally generous because that is what the church does. We're going to lead the way in generosity. Then Luke records this. He said, they worship together at the temple each day, met in their homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. This is important. (laughs) They got together for in-person gathering to worship God. I think it's incredibly important that that we recognize that Luke thought that this was important enough to make sure that he mentioned this in the early church's structure. Is they got together and worshiped and celebrated together in a large gathering. But notice, he repeats something else, almost to say, guys, that's important. You should get together and worship. You should get together and celebrate. That's a great thing. The gathering is important. But then he turns back to the idea of small groups. And he says, they shared their meals in homes. They met in homes to take the Lord's Supper. It was in the homes that they remembered what Jesus did on the cross. They, they were given the opportunity to share meals with one another, to grow together. And let, let me repeat, as Luke did, to remind you, we will teach, we will preach, we will worship to prepare us for the conversation and discussion that's going to have in small group setting, in the home church, in the places where growth is actually going to take place, in the, in the moments where we don't agree and we aren't eye to eye and that we can discuss it together, that tension will spur us t- towards growth in Christ. We are a church of small groups. Finally, Luke wraps it up with this. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Now, This is incredibly important that we notice this. The Lord added to their fellowship every day. See, if there's not people moving towards Christ in your gatherings, then we need to re-examine the gathering. (laughs) Like, if people aren't taking steps towards Jesus, then we need to re-imagine the structure This is a staple for the church. God brings people closer to him. That is what the church does. And this matters at shift. But I think it's incredibly important that we don't forget some words that Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. He said this. He said, I planted the seeds in your heart and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. This is the point. God honors the faithfulness of the people, his church. The early church grew because they devoted themselves to preaching and to fellowship, to worship and to acts of love, to home churches, to small groups, and God honored their faithfulness and added to their number. Let's be people shift that would choose to devote ourselves to teaching and preaching, not to just simply listen to somebody talk at you, but instead for the moment where you get the opportunity to have a conversation with someone about what was taught and to be challenged by it, to the fellowship and sharing with one another, to be people that would be irrationally generous and looking for opportunities to bless others and a people that would pray 
expecting God to show up in the moment, to pray with the laying of hands, believing that God will do a miracle in the here and now. Shift. Let's believe that this is the best of times. See, we are the church. We've left the building. Let's be the church with one another. God, thank you so much for this opportunity just to dive into your word. And, and, and God, right now, as I'm even praying, I feel convicted in my heart. God, I pray that you would convict people's hearts all over the place that are watching this right now. God, that you would teach us that the church has left. God, allow us to be people that would seize this great opportunity to be the church. God, give us courage. Give us boldness to not stay the same to not be waiting for the moment when we can go back to what we used to be, but instead pressing forward into the way that you designed your church to be. Give us courage to take steps into that, even this day. And the only way that we can do that is because you sent your son who laid his life down on the cross. God, send your Holy Spirit into us now to have the courage that only you can provide and the peace that passes all understanding. Allow us to press into you to make a difference with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey there, thank you for joining us. I don't know about you guys, but around this time, it's been pretty stressful for me and my family. It seems like a lot of these stressors going on are making us feel hopeless, giving us some kind of anxiety that we have to go through and we feel like we don't have the answers. And that may be true, but there always is one person who does has the answers, and that is God. We can always turn to him. He's an unstoppable force that always watches over us and always will provide a solution no matter what our circumstances are. Remember that as we sing this song.
Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. Thank you, Father. Nothing can stop you. Sometimes we only think about the things that happened in the past. But we look for and pray for and trust and believe in that you are a God, not just of the past, but a God of the future. You will do it again. You will move again. You will bring breakthrough again. You will bring healing. You are stronger. You are victorious. We hold on to that and we run to you and we walk with you. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall but you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come I know the battle's won For you have never failed me Your promise to stand, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness, I'm still in your hands, this is my call. Bye. 
Father, you're faithful. You're trustworthy. Oh, breathe your peace into our hearts and our lives, Father. And let our faith increase. Our faith rise up. Father, help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Because we serve and follow a God that is mighty. A God that is the creator of the universe. Oh, thank you, Father. Who you are is amazing. Thank you that you're a good father. Thank you that you're a faithful friend. Thank you that you're so patiently walking with us. Oh, thank you that we will see you again and again and again. Break the chains and move the mountains and set people free and bring breakthrough even in our own lives. Provide as we need because you are good. You are faithful and trustworthy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen.
Wow, man, I love when Pastor Brad brings the word, especially when he says, I, I'm throwing it all out the door the night before, and he rewrites it because God prompt him, prompted him to. It's always encouraging to know that our pastors are listening to what God has to say. So don't forget, if you're new here or you are ready to take next steps, we want to walk with you in that. Just comment the word new or next, and we will connect with you right here in the comment section. Guys, thank you so much for your giving and your continuous giving. And we want to encourage you to continue to honor God with your finances and continue to help push this vision forward of giving people the gospel and that the good news of Jesus solving the world's problems. And the great thing about technology today is that you can give right from your home, right from wherever you, you give online and on the Shift Church, by, um, Shift Church app. So feel free to continue to give in that way. And we love you guys. We thank you for doing it. And Shift Church is so blessed to have you guys supporting and partnering partnering with us. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are blessed and you are being a blessing. We love you guys for that. We love being able to be a part of that, to be saying, yeah, we're, we're going to continue to serve our community. Um, now, I want to tell you guys something exciting. So you've probably heard there's safety in numbers. <laughs> Not Well, we're going to do the reverse. <laughs> we're going to go forward with our dinner groups. Our dinner groups are where you meet one time a month with a group of people. But what we're going to do is practice the safety in numbers in reverse. So let me, before you go, oh, what are they doing? Let me explain, okay? So um, it's a great time to socialize with some people in a small, safe setting. Now, we are rolling that out for June, July, and August. However, I want you guys to know that we really believe that we're going to make sure it's safe for everyone before we pull the trigger on that. So we are going to go ahead and proceed with sign up. So if you are interested in a dinner group, you meet with... Um, just people in the in the Gainesville area or the greater Gainesville area, and we'll gather together for dinner, whether it's at a home, at a restaurant that's open um, and allows the seating in a small, small um, meeting. And um, it's just a way to get to know other people. But we reserve the right to make sure it's safe for everybody. So um, we could end up having to pull back on that or postpone it some. And so we want, it, want you to know that we're never going to go forward with anything that we think um, would put anybody in jeopardy. But we are going to go ahead and plan ahead. Go ahead and sign up. Um, we're going to have links on the comment section as well as our weekly email as well as our virtual campus. You can find it there. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask them. Um, we're going to go ahead and proceed with the sign up. But then... We are going to make sure it's safe. We're following all the guidelines, and then we'll go ahead and roll that out. If we have to pull back some on it, we will, and we'll just um, proceed as we can in a safe way. But we do want to have some kind of plan that if things continue to become safer and safer for us all together, that we have social opportunities. And even if you sign up and you're like, hey, I changed my mind. I don't want to do that. That's okay. That's okay. So go ahead, sign up. Um, it lets us know you're interested, and then you can make that decision that's best for you, yourself, your family, as the time comes. But we don't want to miss out on community and opportunities to gather together um, in a safe environment. And so we invite you to be a part of our dinner groups. They're always such a blast having dinner with others, just getting to know people, um, communing together. It's always a great time. I love food. So this is my kind of thing. All right, so we encourage you to continue to sign up if you feel comfortable. And thanks again for worshiping with us this week. We are encouraged by your presence online, and we pray that God continues to bless you guys, continue to keep you guys, and encourage you to move on until the next week. So we love you. We hope you continue to engage with us on Facebook through our virtual campus throughout the week. Love you guys. See you guys next week.